Now it's time for our final exclusive look at the Alexander Archive. Now over the last few weeks we have seen some amazing film shot by Marjorie Alexander of her wealthy Wirral family over the last century. Now this week we're concentrating on the war years and as Dick Duckinfield reports it was a time of despair and hope for the family. And the remarkable thing about the Alexander Archive is that Marjorie and her camera always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. And she had the knack of capturing some quite extraordinary moments on film. More than 30,000 feet of her films remain today. But of all the footage, there's one sequence coming up which reveals her keen eye for the unusual. What you're seeing is a record of a simple family holiday to Germany. Marjorie had taken her nephews, Gamble and Stuart, for a cruise down the Rhine. But this soon turned into a more sinister event. The year is 1934, and the usual sightseeing trips are soon forgotten the family has a fateful encounter with Hitler and the Nazis at the historic Nuremberg rally. Gemmel recalled those years vividly when I went to meet him at his home in Dent near Sedba. It was when we were there that we had these frightening, this frightening experience of seeing what really seemed to be going on. And there were field kitchens going everywhere, thousands of troops all being gathered up for the gathering, for the rally, and being subjected to all sorts of political speeches. Like most people in Britain, the family spent the next few years in preparation for war. The Alexander boys joined their school officer training corps. the local Hooten Airport in Wirral, grim reminders of the growing menace were on the runway. It's 1939 and war is coming, and Marjorie's once again filming children in the garden of her house in Heswell. Only this time it's a group of evacuees who've been sent from London. A few weeks later, there's a more poignant celebration for Marjorie to record. Gemmell's 21st birthday party. It was the last time the family would ever be together, for a tragic sequence of events is about to overwhelm them. Gemmel soon found himself being sent to France. I was posted up to the 51st Highland Division, but by the time I got up north a bit, I discovered that they were surrounded. In fact, I couldn't get to them. And the French people around me said, your lot are leaving all the ships and boats we can find are removing them and you've got left chum. So I had to think what to do and it was then that I thought, well, probably the best thing to do is to make my way to Nantes and see if my friend Anne-Marie could put me up for a bit. This was the woman Gemmel turned to. She was the family's former governess, Anne-Marie. In the early 1930s, Anne-Marie had been taken on by Marjorie to help teach the children French. She became one of the family, accompanying them wherever they went. She features in many of Marjorie's films of this time. In 1938, she returned to France to get married and to live in Nantes, and the Alexanders are guests of honour. An ironic twist two years later, and Marie saved Gemmel's life when he turned up on her doorstep on the run from the Germans. She got a shock when I rolled up at her door, and she just pulled me quickly through the door and said, uh, come in, come in. She said, you don't know where you are with people here now. The Germans are in charge, and our French people don't know whether they should side with the new bosses or with the old. 
and you can't trust anybody. There was no one else in France that I knew to, to make for that haven. Well, I literally lived in her attic. I never came downstairs. And uh, she fed me, she looked after me. It was a, a somewhat confined existence, but a safe one. Back at home, Margie would spend her days waiting for any news. Gemmell was listed as missing in action. She continued to film, but with most of the family away, she had to concentrate on some of the more beautiful landscapes of the North West and North Wales. Gemmell escaped back to England on a Polish trawler, but was then sent to North Africa and joined Montgomery's staff. He was only a mile away from his brother Stuart at El Alamein when tragedy struck. Unfortunately, when he moved forward with a load of his chaps, he, he ran off the track into a minefield, just, and he got out of his vehicle to direct the driver to drive the vehicle back over its tracks to get it out of the minefield. But by sod's law or some misfortune, the truck had gone over a mine going in and not exploded. But when they came back over it, it did explode and it killed my brother and only did minor damage to the chaps, the lads in the truck. For Marjorie, the film she'd taken of Stuart as a child and growing up now took on a new meaning for her. The circumstances of Stuart's death came as a shock for the team who spent the last seven years restoring and researching the archive. Film collector Steve Bate, who's been leading the work at his video production studios in North Wales, says there's one moment where Marjorie filmed Stuart they now find very moving. Of all the footage that I've seen, there's, there's one scene that, that stands out from everything else, and that's the scene of Stuart, the young boy, walking down Hollyhead Breakwater. And if you look, he's just walking down, he's got his back to you, and he's like a small dot going off in the distance. And then he just turns around. It's as if he knows you're watching him. And I think, um, yeah, maybe he knows we're all watching his, uh, his films today. Marjorie would go on to devote her life to helping others. She became a leading political figure in Wirral, but life would never be quite the same. She would never get over Stuart's death. But her obsession for the camera would be with her until 1963, when she was no longer able to film. The legacy she leaves is an extraordinary insight into a lost way of life. And for Gemmell, who's 84, and her only surviving nephew, it's the opportunity to recall a life he too thought had been lost. It's marvellous it, to, to recall these wonderful happy times and happy things one did all through this filming. Marvellous. I don't have any, any kind of d doubts or difficulties with it. But it, it's, it's, it's reopened a past I would never have known or never have remembered at all. You go through all that happiness, but then you, you're looking forward and you're, you're not going to be backward looking. You're positive and looking forward. And then you to be reminded of those wonderful times you had. People who've now gone. And uh, yeah, it's great. You can see even more of the Alexander Archive on our website. But that's it from Inside Out for this week. We'll be back next Monday night at 7.30 here on BBC One. Until then, bye-bye.